Coming up on today's Airborne, aero crook David Riggs has perished in a plane crash in China. Boeing 7879 makes its first flight. And a new airship prototype begins flight testing. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. ANN has confirmed that aviation's resident bad boy, David Riggs, has died in a crash of his Lance Air while in China for an air show. Xinhua reports that the accident occurred outside Shuyang, when Riggs' experimental amateur built Lance Air 320 went down in a lake. Riggs was flying with a young Chinese translator who also perished in the crash. The accident took place Tuesday at 1300 local time. And reports indicate that Riggs was seen flying low over the water before the accident took place. Sources in China indicate that Riggs was attempting to operate under a Canadian certificate instead of his now revoked U.S. license. Riggs lost his pilot certificate last year following a fatal crash involving a fly-for-hire scheme that he was involved with. In May of last year, Riggs was flying an L-39 in formation with another L-39 piloted by David Gillis when Gillis's aircraft went down, killing him and a passenger. The FAA revoked his certificate, saying the jets were not approved for flight-for-hire operations. At the time, Riggs claimed he had done nothing wrong. A previous FAA grounding in 2008 occurred after he buzzed the Santa Monica Pier, terrorizing hundreds who thought they were under attack. The latest addition to Boeing's Dreamliner stable, the longer, higher-capacity Dash 9, made its first flight in the skies over Washington State on Tuesday. The airliner lifted off the runway just after 11 a.m. Pacific time and flew for about five hours, running tests of its flight controls and other systems. The airplane used in the flight testing is not a test airplane. It will eventually fly in Air New Zealand's livery sometime next year. Reuters reports that the flight profile called for speeds of up to 250 knots and an altitude of 16,000 feet. The route of flight took the new Dreamliner over Puget Sound and then inland for the bulk of the flight. Boeing has unfilled orders for 936 Dreamliners, and about 41% of those are the Dash 9 model. The world's newest and most unique lighter-than-air aircraft, a half-size prototype of the Aeros craft, dubbed the Pelican, made its first tethered flight September 7th. Though shifting winds at the former military base in Tustin, California, where the project is being developed, prevented an untethered flight test. This new airship has a rigid skeleton of aluminum and carbon fiber covered in a mylar fabric. It obtains its lift from helium-filled bladders. Gizmodo reports that the planned full-scale airship would be more than 400 feet long and have a payload of 66 tons. The Aeros craft has been under development since 1996, and both the Pentagon and NASA have supported the development to the tune of some $50 million. The test at Tustin lasted about two hours. A crew of two was on board for the inaugural flight. A spokesman for Aeros Corporation told Gizmag that the first untethered flight was planned very soon and was expected to reach an altitude of about 100 feet. Dynon Avionics released its latest addition to Skyview's navigation toolbox. Geo-referenced approach departure charts, airport diagrams, and enhancements to Skyview's moving map. With these new features, Dynon is able to offer experimental and LSA pilots a paperless cockpit. Skyview's new charting capabilities allow pilots to quickly find and display the procedures they need during flight, all while showing the aircraft's position and track on the chart itself. With the touch of a button, Skyview automatically loads the airport diagram while on the ground. In the U.S., this release includes procedure charts, IFR departures, arrival approaches, hotspots, land and hold short operations, and supplemental text. Airport diagrams include both the official FAA diagrams as well as flight guides set of nearly 5,000 extremely detailed airport diagrams 
for virtually every public use airport in the U.S. Free Flight Systems is interfacing its Model 1201 WASP GPS sensor with the Garmin GTX 330 MODES transponder to provide an additional 1090 MHz extended Squitter ADS-B out upgrade solution for GTX 330 owners. Under a technology licensing agreement between Free Flight Systems and Garmin, Free Flight Systems is enabling the 1201 WASP GPS sensor to serve as the approved high-integrity position source paired with the GTX 330 with ES functionality and a rule-compliant 1090 ES ADS-B out installation. The upgrade solution increases ADS-B out equipage choices for aircraft owners based on their aircraft type, existing avionics, and flying requirements. You're watching Airborne. More in a moment. Redbird Skyport is a multifaceted aviation laboratory charged with developing innovative solutions to the issues facing the industry. It started out as a vision for a laboratory where we could objectively measure the systems and the processes that we were developing. Being able to put some objective measures behind the anecdotal evidence that we have about the value of motion and the application of this technology is very, very important because until we can objectively measure it and play that data back, we can't design training systems that make the best use of it. For more information about Redbird Flight Simulations as well as Redbird's new Skyport, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com or www.redbirdskyport.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, you can always drop us an email to news spy at aero news.net. Move over NASCAR, air racing now has its own five time. The National Championship Air Races wrapped up its historic 50th event on Sunday afternoon with a thrilling Breitling Unlimited Gold Championship race that ended with four-time defending champion Steve Hinton taking his fifth straight victory. Hinton from Chino, California was piloting the popular P-51 Mustang Voodoo. Racing against his former plane, the legendary P-51 Mustang Strega, owned by famed air racer Bill Tiger Destefani. By day's end, gold champions were crowned in all six race classes. Held every September just north of Reno, the National Championship Air Races have become an institution for Northern Nevada, as well as aviation enthusiasts from around the world. In the past 10 years, the event has attracted more than 200,000 spectators per year and generated more than $80 million a year for the region's economy. The event features six racing classes, a large display of static aircraft, and several military and civil flight demonstrations. The FAA posted a final rule and request for comments in the Federal Register on Monday that will exempt some additional pilots from having to complete a biennial flight review. The purpose of the flight review is to provide for a regular assessment of pilot skills and aeronautical knowledge, thereby assuring that every pilot has a qualified individual comment on his or her competency at least once every two years. The original rule provides some exceptions to such a review. In a recent legal interpretation, the FAA concluded that a flight instructor practical test is not included in the listed exceptions because it's not a pilot proficiency check. The new rule amends that and will permit an airman who passes a practical test for issuance of a flight instructor certificate, a practical test for the addition of a rating to a flight instructor certificate, a practical test for renewal of a flight instructor certificate, or a practical test for the reinstatement of a flight instructor certificate to meet the 24 calendar month flight review requirements. The rule is open for comments until October 16, 2013. The Department of Defense POW Missing Personnel Office recently announced that two U.S. servicemen missing in action from World War II have been identified 
and are being returned to their families for burial with full military honors. They are Army Air Force 2nd Lieutenant Valerie L. Pollard, 25, of Monterey, California, and Sergeant Dominic J. Lacari, 31, of Frankfurt, New York. On March 13, 1944, Polar and Lacari were members of an A-26G Havoc bomber that crashed after attacking enemy targets in what is now Papua New Guinea. In 2012, the A-20G crash site was excavated and the remains of Lacari and Pollard were recovered. Remains representing Pollard and Lacari will be buried as a group in a single casket on September 19th at Arlington National Cemetery near Washington, D.C. The individually identified remains of Lacari were buried on August 6th in Frankfurt, New York. Officials from Swift Fuels LLC based in the Purdue Research Park of West Lafayette, Indiana, held a ribbon-cutting ceremony last Friday to open their new aviation fuel blending facility in Lafayette, Indiana. They also broke ground on their new pilot plant operations. The company is investing $2.5 million in the operating facilities. The blending facility will store at least 50,000 gallons of unleaded high-octane aviation components for sales and shipment. The pilot plant will produce more than 10,000 gallons of 100 SF per month when it reaches full capacity. Swift Fuels said the company's 100 SF aviation gasoline can be used in all general aviation piston engine aircraft worldwide, including the more than 165,000 GA aircraft in the U.S. ANN's editor-in-chief Jim Campbell is here to share the real tragedy of the David Rigg story. Here's this week's Barnstorming. Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. Well, I wish I had a better topic for today. We'll make it short and sweet. David Riggs, a person we'd written about quite a bit, a con man, a crook, a felon, a very dangerous person uh, choosing to conduct a lot of illicit activities in aviation. I hesitate to call him a pilot because a pilot is somebody who takes control of an aircraft with a modicum of common sense and reason, and common sense and reason did not rule David Riggs' life. Well, the other day, David Riggs did what we expected David Riggs to do. Be stupid and kill himself. The problem is, he took an 18-year-old Chinese girl, the translator, with him. This last death did not have to happen. While the FAA did take his licenses, there was more the FAA could do. While the feds were investigating this guy, there's bankruptcy fraud implications. Well, they didn't stop him. They didn't bring him to justice. When he was running scams using the daily deal sites, well, we talked to him. They didn't want to deal with it. They didn't want to be embarrassed. And eventually the stuff went away because we publicized it so much. But the fact of the matter is they didn't help the matter either. And this guy was able to feed off of that for quite some time. Ultimately, Aero News, a little blog site called Aviation Criminal, and the International Council of Air Shows are the only three entities we know that really did anything to try to stop a dangerous man from doing dangerous things. While Aviation Criminal did an extraordinary amount of work, you have to understand that the person who was behind this was not a pilot. She just simply loved aviation and was friends with a number of aviators and thought that somebody like this really needed to be stopped. We couldn't agree more. And yet we took such flack for it. I even had a sponsor tell me that we that our uh, stories on David Riggs were over the top and way too much. And they're not a sponsor anymore. They're loss. Fact of the matter is this. We don't expect the alphabet associations to be aviation police, but we expected them when we told them to raise their voices, and they didn't. There's so much more that needed to happen here, but the fact of the matter is there is a dead girl in China who didn't have to die. Aviation got yet another black eye from a guy who cared for nothing but his own pocketbook and his own self-aggrandizement. And the aviation world, with very few exceptions, stood by, said tisk tisk, and did nothing. This is not the industry we need. This is not the industry we deserve. But if we keep looking the other way, when bad pilots or bad people do bad things in aviation, then this is the aviation industry we're going to get. God help us all. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. The operator of a quadcopter found himself being briefly detained by German police 
after he flew his aircraft over a campaign event in Dresden for German Chancellor Angela Merkel. The photographer was reportedly attempting to get aerial photos of the event, which he intended to sell. But the authorities were not too pleased about the quadcopter hovering over the event. They identified the pilot and told him to land the aircraft. The 23-year-old pilot brought the aircraft down immediately within seven feet of the German leader, who looked mildly amused as the quadcopter came down practically at her feet. The police quickly determined that the photographer had no ill intentions and was just trying to make a living. He was released after being questioned. The eventual fate of the aircraft or any images that may have been captured was not mentioned. Well, that's our program. Remember, you can get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories at aero-news.net. Please remember, Airborne is streamed twice weekly and is always online. Join us again every Tuesday and Friday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.